This is Texans TV. The draft is less than two weeks away, so we're talking all about it and what the Texans might do in the first round with Austin Gale of PFF.com. Don't go anywhere. Texans 360 is now. We are ready to rock. In his rock and roll. You already know what time it is, man. Touchdown, Texans. I got fleets for all y'all. He's in rock and roll. Guess when you think you've seen it all. There's always something else. Let's go, let's go home, let's go home. Hello there and welcome into Texans 360. We are so very happy that you're with us. It's going to be a fantastic show because we're bringing in all the way from PFF, Pro Football Focus, one of the experts about everything NFL and the draft. We're talking with Austin Gale. Austin, fantastic to see you. How are you today? Doing fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. You bet you. We've got a lot to cover in the show because a little bit later we've got a stock report. We're also doing a My Football Story with pass rusher Jonathan Grenard. But we got to focus on some news of the week, and for that we begin with some signings. Brandon Cooks, the wide receiver, is back in the fold for the Texans, as well as reports that Steven Nelson, a corner from Philadelphia, has joined the squad. Now, Austin, let's start with Cooks. He's been, in my mind, one of the most underrated receivers in the NFL since he joined in 2014. Texans and Davis Mills get a very reliable target back in the fold. He's had a two or had a couple thousand yard receiving seasons since he joined the Texans in 2020. You like this move? Absolutely. I think Brandon Cooks is, like you said, one of the more underrated receivers in the NFL. I think a lot of that is because he's been a bit of a journeyman, right? He hasn't had a lot of opportunity to stick to one spot in the NFL. I think in Houston, as they continue to develop Davis Mills, which all signs point to them avoiding quarterback in 2022 and, and you know, avoiding quarterback in 2022 to invest in Davis Mills and move forward in that direction. I think Brandon Cooks is essential to that. Right now, do they need more weapons beyond uh, more more weapons beyond Brandon Cooks? Absolutely, but I still think it's a it's a valuable move for a Houston Texans team that obviously needs to invest in some of the good players that they do have right now. No doubt, and we're going to get into the idea of adding some of those weapons a little bit later in the show, talking about the draft. But cornerback was a position that Lovey Smith said earlier this week must get better if the Texans are going to improve. Well, they take a step in adding a guy like Steven Nelson. And that's somebody, that's someone that's done some really good things in your mind with the Eagles as well as throughout the rest of his career. 100%. I think that's a veteran cornerback that can immediately come in and, and play multiple coverage looks, right? I think he had a, lot of, had a lot of success playing press coverage in KC, had more of that in Pittsburgh, and then in Philadelphia this past season, still a very competent corner. And I think in the secondary, you know, very similar to offensive line in the NFL, you need to avoid weak links, right? It's not necessarily about having four Jalen Ramseys back there, right? It's about having no weak links, guys that won't give up a ton of yards in coverage. And Nelson, you know, throughout his career has never been one of those guys. He's been a veteran player over the last three or four years that's consistently offered high-end production. Is he the best cornerback in the NFL? No, but he's still a very competent starter that comes in immediately and, and can offer a lot of success early on and, and help raise the floor of that group, right? Maintain some consistency in the secondary. And hey, if the Texans are able to find four Jalen Ramsey type players in the draft, we'll take that too. But that's a discussion for another time. Hey, and speaking of another time, our very own DP Sidhu caught up with one of your buddies there at PFF.com in Mike Renner. And this is what they discussed. It's the Deep Slant 101 presented by Xfinity. And joining me today is Pro Football Focus's Mike Renner. He's the lead draft analyst. He's the co-host of Tailgate. Mike, welcome in. I haven't talked to you in a few years, but I, I'm sure this is probably your favorite time of year. Oh yeah, for sure. April is my month. I, from pretty much the start to the end, I am watching draft prospects, prospects following this stuff, and I, I, there's nothing else I'd rather be doing. All right, so if we just look at positions, when you've got two picks in the first round like the Texans do, which I don't, I mean, since I've worked for the Texans, they've never had that. Usually they don't have a first round pick. So you've got three and you've got 13. What's your strategy position wise? I mean, if it's deep in pass rushers or edge rushers, is that a position you wait on or is that a position that's really elite at the top? I mean, walk me through the three and 13 picks, like how, how you attack it position based on position. So for the Texans, they're in a sort of with a roster where they need to attack valuable positions, you know, offensive tackle, wide receiver, 
defensive end, obviously quarterback, that's probably off the table this year with what they saw from Davis Mills last year, but like positions where if you draft them, you're paying them less than what you'd be paying free agents. So in this year's class, looking at positions like that, and that's what I said, I think they should attack because they just don't have, you know, a ton of talent on that roster. You wouldn't be drafting another three overall if you did, is offensive tackle, it is top heavy. There are about three or four guys that you want as top 10 picks, and then there probably aren't any of the rest of the draft. So if I'm drafting for the Texans number three overall, I'm looking offensive tackle because it's a position that pretty much everyone in the NFL needs, and there's just not a lot of them in this draft, but there are some good ones towards the top. So I'm looking offensive tackle early with that number three overall pick, because then you can wait on that pass rusher, wait on that wide receiver if that's where you want to go to pick number 13, because those are a little bit deeper positions. The difference between someone like Kayvon Thibodeau or Trayvon Walker, who may go in the top five, and someone like Jermaine Johnson, the Florida State edge rusher, who may go more in the teens, isn't that big in my opinion. So you can wait on that position to pick 13, because I think edge is the deepest position in the draft class. So I'd lean off to tackle pick three, someone like Iki Aquanu. Evan Neal, and then once pick 13 rolls around, that's when the wide receiver class, maybe someone like Jamison Williams out of Alabama, that's when that starts to become more attractive, or the edge class where, like I said, Jermaine Johnson, uh, George Karloft is from Purdue. There's names there that could be productive as, and will go in the middle of the first round. Levy Smith has talked about wanting a three down back, which is maybe a luxury the Texans haven't had in recent years. They've done running back by committee. So with that being said, what is a good pick for the Texans? When might be around that they target running back? Should they do so? And, and who are some of the guys that you think might be a good fit? In my opinion, there's two actual three down running backs in this class and Kenneth Walker from Michigan State, Brees Hall from Iowa State. I expect both of those guys to be off the board by probably pick 50, probably somewhere uh, at least aren't going to make it out of the second round. So at that point, I don't think you're finding your three down back in this class. It would be difficult to do so, uh, what I would do is probably take a chance fourth, fifth round on a couple guys who have the athletic tools, but may not necessarily be um, polished products coming out. Some of the guys I'd highlighted in that mold are Rashad White from Arizona State, who was a JUCO transfer, really just hasn't played too much football, but is electric with the ball in his hands and one of the best test testers athletically in this draft class. And then Zaquandre White from South Carolina, who was a backup there for them, but was a former top recruit, a uh, heck of an athlete, tested out really well at the combine, but never really got to see the football field. Those are two guys to where, if you're gonna look for that mold, you could probably find them in the later rounds. Okay, joining us is Austin Gale of PFF.com. That was his pal, Mike Renner with my pal, DP City. I guess we're all pals, we should say it that way, uh, Austin. But let me hear who your number one player in the draft is in 2022. Who do you like the most? It's Aiden Hutchinson, the Michigan defensive end. I think he is the top player in this draft class. I've had an opportunity to work with him on a four-part podcast series here at PFF and getting to know him, his family, his coaches, and all, all these different people. I think the theme for me is consistency, you know, consistency in his approach on and off the field, the production at Michigan in big games like Ohio State and the, and the Iowa game and the Big Ten Championship. And he's an elite athlete, right? Six, seven, one, three cone at his size is absolutely absurd. Good measurables, good athletic testing, high character, culture changer. I think you know exactly what you're getting in Aiden Hutchinson, and I think it's worthy of the number one overall pick. Yeah, you know, PFF.com has a fantastic mock draft simulator. I've probably uh, found myself on that a little bit too much. Don't tell my bosses. But it's rare that Hutchinson falls to the Texans at third overall. But with that being the case, who could you see the Texans targeting there with that third pick and who would fit nicely into this squad? I, I do think it's smart for the Houston Texans to lock into two positions at number three overall. It's edge defender and offensive tackle, right? I think if Hutchinson falls that far, that's a dream scenario for the Houston Texans. If not, you're looking at Trayvon Walker of Georgia or Kayvon Thibodeau of Oregon. I think any three, any one of those three edge defenders is a slam dunk of a pick for the Houston Texans. And I think beyond that, it's offensive tackle, right? It's looking at Iki Aquanu, Vency State, Charles Cross, Mississippi State, or Evan Neal of Alabama. That's the benefit of being the number three overall, you know, number three overall pick in this year's draft. I think they can get one of two really high value positions, right? Offensive tackle and pass rusher are two of the highest paid uh, non-quarterback positions in the NFL. And there's some blue chip talent there. I think there's blue chip talent in Thibodeau, in, in Walker, in Hutchinson, and also Evan Neal and Nikki Aquanu. I think you go after that at number three overall, that's a really good value pick and you're getting really good football players. Does running back uh, kind of turn your eye in the second, third rounds perhaps as possibilities for the Texans? 
For sure. I, I don't love this running back class. I think it's deeper than it is top heavy. If I had to highlight my favorite, it's Kenneth Walker the third from Michigan State. I think he's a great, you know, force miss tackle type of back, right? I don't think he's a phenomenal pass catcher, but gone are the days or half the league is getting running backs with that get over 300 touches. You're looking for backs that can complement a backfield. And if you're looking at pass catching ability, that's where you look more at Tyler Beatty of Missouri and some of these other slashers like James Cook out of Georgia. I think what they need to lock into is what kind of skill set do they want to add to their backfield and then from there look at the complimentary pieces you can add on say you know late day two early day three good stuff with austin gale of pff.com he's going to join us in the next segment as well as the rest of the show but coming up we're talking about jonathan grenard the pass rusher for the houston texans don't go anywhere this is texans 360. the new season is underway baby Hey man, it's been a minute, man. It's good to be back. Good to be back. Let's get the work. Early morning with it. We already know what time it is. Back like we never left, man. Start this thing off early. Good. good to be back. You know what I'm saying? We about to kick off the 2022 season. Get to work. Top of the morning. Did you have your eggs this morning? Y'all did it, bro. Y'all didn't have your eggs in your French toast. It's outstanding to see Texans back inside NRG Stadium getting ready for the season. It's off-season conditioning work beginning earlier this week. And right now we're here on Texans 360, me, Drew Doherty, with Austin Gale of PFF.com. Awesome to talk with you, Austin. Jonathan Grenard, defensive end, had a really solid 2021. Texans certainly counting on him as a cornerstone of this defense for the future. Good things to come from him, I think. Yeah, really impressive year two for Jonathan Bernard. And I think that got lost in, you know, what obviously wasn't as successful of a season as the Houston Texans want, but an 89.2 PFF pass rushing grade this past year, 27 total pressures. And you saw a lot of this in college, right? It all, it was all about putting it all together for Gennard. And I think you saw that last year. I think you could bank on further development. I think health is the most important thing and obviously opportunity. I think he's going to have both those things in this upcoming season. Jonathan Grenard, an intriguing possibility for the future for the Texans. He's also got a very interesting back story. Here's his my football story. I was born in Atlanta, Georgia. I moved out to Douglasville, Georgia, where I originally first started playing football. Me and my brothers, we always were rough growing up. We watched wrestling growing up a lot, so pretty much we just wanted to be physical all the time. My dad, um, he used to see us running around playing in the field and always playing with our friends outside and said, what better way to showcase our talents than to actually play ball? I really just was out there just trying to run through people, didn't really know what to do. Until one play actually, I ended up running through the line and taking a handoff and running it back about 50 yards the other way. And that next year, once they seen that, I pretty much played running back all the way up until about my junior year high school where I kind of finally hit my growth spurt. Once I was introduced to playing defensive end, that's when I kind of took it more serious because I understood that I could possibly go somewhere with it. My dad, Matt Grenard Jr., he passed away when I was a junior in high school with congestive heart failure. Football came through my dad. He was the one taking us to practice. Of course, my mom was there too. But my dad was a guy, you know, hard on us watching film. I was watching film at like five, six years old. It was tough when I lost him. I pretty much didn't want to play ball anymore just because he was my main inspiration for football. But I also knew that that would be a disservice to all his teachers and I'll be letting myself down if I didn't want to play ball. Pretty much I just use it as motivation. And now he's watching me from above so that way we can push me through to whatever I face. And I know that, you know, great things are going to come through it. I ended up going to University of Louisville to play football with Coach Petrino, Coach Grantham, who all recruited me. My coaches at Louisville ended up getting fired, so I ended up having to make a decision of whether I fit the system or not. And then, you know, I transferred out to Florida. Jonathan Grenard, the Louisville transfer. Grenard, head the other way. Florida actually was my favorite school growing up. It was my dream school. The environment, you know, Gator Nation is huge. I mean, I had no experience like that ever as far as playing in the football scene, and they're going to be packed 90,000 every week. I got a chance to go to the combine and showcase my talents. I was just blessed to be in a situation like that despite all the injuries that I've had in the past, just getting to that point of getting my foot in the door. With the 90th pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, the Houston Texans select Jonathan Grenard, linebacker, Florida. I ended up getting drafted here third round and it was a, a dream come true. I just had my mom, my sister, my stepdad, my brother, my girlfriend, and her family as well, and everybody else, my aunts. Everyone in there was just a part of that. And there were so many unsung heroes as well that helped me get to that point. But just for everyone to experience that and see that was, was all that I ever needed. I was very thankful that I got drafted, period. But to go in the third round was huge for me as well. And the transition there, I mean, once you got here, none of that matters. I mean, I had to just put my feet down to get to work. <laughs> Go, 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 go
Bernard with the sack back at the 25 yard line. You asked for it, you got it. I'm just a, a guy who want to put my head down and work. I mean, I didn't really come in to, to expect many things. Whatever role they put me in, I just want to be that guy and do it to the best of my ability. We're digging deeper into the current roster of the Houston Texans with Austin Gale of PFF.com. Don't move a muscle. Texans 360 continues. They put it in that work. New squad. Right? No excuses. It's grinding every day. <laughs> Austin, if they had cameras on you and me working in the weight room, it'd look just like that, right? <laughs> Absolutely. It, it probably would. I'm not, I'm not dogging you because it wouldn't like that for me. Uh, anyways, Austin Gale <laughs> of PFF.com joining us here on Texans 360. Like we mentioned earlier, it's cool to see the guys in the building. And Lovey Smith spoke earlier this week about how energized he and the rest of the coaching staff were to get back together for the first time since the team split at the end of the 2021 campaign. A guy who's got all eyes on him is Davis Mills at quarterback. And while he took some nice steps last fall, he's looking to take bigger ones this fall as well. Austin, your initial assessment of how he did as a rookie and what might be there for him in 2022? I, I think the best way to build it is he exceeded expectations, right? Not a lot of people expected Davis Mills to have the success he had early on. And when you look at some of the throws on tape, you see some high-end NFL throws. And I don't think you could say you know, that you couldn't say that he had, you know, Zach Wilson or Trevor Lawrence even had some of the same number that Davis Mills had. He put together some really good football games. And the next step for him, I do think, is just putting it all together into more of a cohesive performance, you know, through four quarters and also over the course of the season. And some of that is support, and some of that is also just building more of a culture there. In Houston, right? There's so many new faces. Even this year, they're adding a ton of pieces that will probably start with Marlon Mack, etc. I, I think building a culture, establishing himself as a leader, and that cohesiveness, that consistency is something Houston's desperate of, right? I mean, it's been, you know, over the last two years, there's been a lot of question marks at quarterback. There's been question marks about, you know, who they're going to add in the draft. You know, people have talked about Larry Tunsil on the block or is Brandon Cooks on the block. Like, they need players to stick around and they need a leader like Davis Mills to kind of buy into that culture and create some cohesiveness. I think that with Lovey Smith there now, you need that more than anything. A new head coach, you know, a new a new running back, all these new faces. Let's find some consistency that starts in the offseason and it starts with Davis Mills. All right, Austin Gale, stick with us. We've got more Texans 360, and when we come back, we've got to do a stock report. Don't go anywhere. We're back on Texans 360. Me, Drew Doherty, and Austin Gale of PFF.com. Austin, uh, you big stock market guy? I can be, right? I think I've, I've moved some stocks around. I'm not as big as some of, the, my, some of my friends, but I'll get involved when I can. So you're no Gordon Gecko, is what you're saying from Wall Street? <laughs> Not yet. Not yet. Me either. So we're all good. Uh, but some someone who is big on the stock report is our very own John Harris, who went wild once again. Hey everybody, welcome into the stock report with me, John Harris. Yes, I know I get really excited when it comes to the stock report, but. You know, I've reached the big 5-0. The ticker can't take it as much as it usually is able to take. So we're going to be on the chill vibe today, talking prospects on the stock report. Oh, I'm going to take your calls, and here comes the first one now. Hello. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, let's talk about Jordan Davis. 6'6", 341. This guy is a Hulk. He is like the size of your three kids put together, plus the fourth one that's on the way. And this guy clogs gaps. He runs from sideline to sideline, and he makes he, he, he makes plays. See what Jordan Davis does to me? I got to keep it under control. I think he'll eventually be able to rush the passer. Got to keep it under control when I talk about Jordan Davis. All right, here comes the phone again. Let's see what they want to talk about. Yellow. Oh, yeah, he's rising. Oh, yeah, he's hot. No doubt. Yeah. Jimmy wants to talk about 
Trevon Walker from out of Georgia may be the hottest prospect that there is in the NFL draft. And why is he so hot? 6'5", 272. He runs in the 4'5 range, and he's as violent as anybody. There I go again. Got to keep it under control when I'm talking about Trevon Walker. This guy is a monster on the edge. We talk about violence. Now, I'm not a violent guy. Listen to me. I'm a good guy, right? No violence here. But on a football field, I want my guys violent. I want them taking on centers and guards and tackles and tight ends and just dead. And just playing good, solid, clean football. All right, phone's ringing one final time. What's going on? How can I help you? Yeah, that's with two eyes. Yes. All right, let's talk about Kair Elam, cornerback from Florida. Now, we want to talk about underrated. See, this is where I can be on a chill vibe right now. Underrated, Kair Elam. But on the field, it's like mass chaos. Elam is slamming, shocking, shedding, getting up in receivers' faces. He is taking them down the field. He is staying hip to hip. Jameson Williams thought he had something on Elam. Man. Underrated, good size, excellent speed, competitive as all get out. But I really need for Kair to show up every single play. He's got to play as if he's playing Jamison Williams from Alabama every single week. That's what we need from Kair Elam. Man, this has been a great stock report featuring players from the Southeastern Conference. Appreciate your calls. We'll see you next time right here. Same bat time, same bat channel. A very sedate John Harris. All right. Well, Austin Gale of PFF.com, it was so much fun having you on. We really appreciate all the insight. How crazy is the next well, week and a half and change going to be for you? Yeah, I really appreciate you guys having me on. This, you know, all the weeks leading into the draft are pretty insane. It doesn't get really, you don't really feel it probably till the week of the draft and then day one, day two, and day three is a legitimate marathon at PFF. It's going to be a good time. It sure will. Well, we'll, we'll be watching your uh, work. We'll have you on again sometime soon. And for the rest of the folks that put this show together, namely like Tyler Markup, we really appreciate you all watching. We'll see you again here on Texans 360. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to know when we post new content.